Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm here with a review and a bit of a walkthrough of Anna Cortez's and CJ Freeman's Playing Card Oracles Divination deck, along with the Alchemical edition of this deck. So it is a bit of a double review and walkthrough. I'm not sure that I'll go through all of the cards, but we are going to head over to my tarot table very soon, so that way you can all see the actual cards and I can flip through them as I speak to them. But before we do that, I just wanted to speak to the deck and the system and the creators overall and kind of cover those bases before we get into the tangible cards. So... The creator of this deck is Anna Cortez. Her father is the illustrator of both decks. His name is CJ Freeman. And I think an important thing to note is the literature surrounding these two. Now, I do have a recent reads video that gives where I go into more of a comprehensive synopsis of both of these books, but I do think that they are worth acquiring if you really want to get the most out of either of these decks. I personally love Anna Cortez's unique system for playing card divination. Both of these decks are fully illustrated playing card decks. The original edition, this one, is 52 cards. It doesn't include jokers. And the alchemical edition is 54 cards, and it includes two jokers. And Anna gets into her thoughts and ideas on jokers in her books. This one, in particular, is meant to be and serve as a guidebook to the original edition, the first one. But it also speaks to playing card divination overall. I highly recommend this one. It doesn't read by it doesn't read like a card by card sort of it doesn't just offer meanings. It goes into her thoughts on on divination, into correspondences, on all sorts of things. So I highly recommend this book. I'll have her website linked below where you can get all of these decks and the books, and I recommend purchasing them from her website. I know that this is no longer in print in terms of being mass market, so it'll it will appear very expensive if you go to look for it on Amazon, so definitely head to her website. And then there's this book, which is more of a meditative approach. The first portion is a memoir on Anna Cortez, so if you're looking to know more about the history that went into the cards and her experience growing up, which also gives you some, some depth in terms of her father who illustrated the decks, I highly recommend this. And then there is uh, the, the back portion, the latter portion of the book, where she goes into healing through the use of cards and uses alchemy as sort of a lens to approach healing for the self and others. So those are the, the two books that can accompany the decks. Anna Cortez is working on a third book, to the best of my knowledge. I've spoken to Anna Cortez. She is such a lovely soul. I find her to be brilliant. And I am planning on doing an interview with her in the near future, so stay tuned for that. That'll be really exciting. Without further ado, we'll head over to my tarot table and look at the cards so that way you can get a better idea of what it is that I'm speaking to when I review and walk through these decks. All right, everyone, so we're over at my tarot table. I have all of the decks that I'm going to be showing actually housed in bags that I did purchase off of Anna Cortez's website. So she does sell more than just the decks and her books. She has a blog that I know of. I know she has a YouTube channel, so I'll link that below where she has a free course in playing card divination but there's also these pouches she sells really intricate and ornate wands so there's a lot to find on her website so i highly recommend checking it out so you might be thinking why are there three decks if there are only there's only a, the original version and the alchemical there are two sizes of the alchemical so i know now that the original edition or just the the standard edition is published through uh, us games i believe yes us games so it's a standard poker size. These are the backs. And I believe you can get it on Amazon or on her website. I would recommend supporting the artist when possible. And then if you're going to, of course, purchase her book, which I believe is primarily just available now on her website, you might save on shipping by just ordering the deck there. So something to think about. All that will be linked below. But I also purchased these really, really cute knitted bags on the on her website as well that are made just to fit for the certain sizes of the decks so it comes with these extra cards which give you a little bit of a rundown on the creators and the deck overall and then the standard edition comes with a little white book which is always helpful and of course if you are already familiar with playing card divination you might be able to sort of transpose your 
unique system onto these cards, but Ana Cortez does have a very unique way of looking at playing card divination. And in my opinion, having fully illustrated cards is helpful, especially for those of us who look for a little bit more imagery and need a bit more to go on. And of course, not of course, but I know that many look at playing card divination differently. There's less of this sort of standardized approach to meanings and correspondences. So each book that you might pick up is going to attribute different meanings to different cards and suits. So it's just very interesting here. I'll show a few of the cards. Each of them do have a title in her book. I believe that this is considered the lovers. The twos are kind of this sort of dichotomy. So there's the rivals, the enemies, um, the lovers. And then the tens actually are attributed to being princesses and they all get a name. All of the courts get a name. And instead of just having a jack, a queen, and a king, Anna Cortez really likes the idea of having a balance in the courts. So she will kind of have the tens play double duty and also be a princess. And so they will all get names, all of the court cards. So this is Tyreen. I personally really love the balance that she's created in her system with the court cards. So that's something, especially for those who are into divination and personally for myself as a tarot reader, I look for balance in terms of a court. Um, all of the fours are a type of wind. That's very interesting. So each number tends to have this sort of congruency throughout the deck. So all of the fours are a type of wind. All of the aces sort of have a similar, similar look to them. I personally find this art style really visually pleasing. And the way that Anna Cortez speaks to and thinks of the cards to me is very unique. So I've really been enjoying using these for daily draws. It's nice because it's small and portable. So for those out there who don't like larger decks, a standard poker size is always nice. And I think that even as somebody who just reads intuitively, you might have a lot to go on here. Well, you really will. They are fully illustrated. So that's always a plus. So you don't necessarily need to know any sort of system to, to dive in here. You can really let... Uh, your creative juices and intuition and imagination flow. This is a review, of course, and my overall consensus opinion here is that I absolutely love Anna Cortez's work and these decks and, of course, CJ Freeman's artwork. So there is a sort of cheekiness here, and the art styles between the original edition and the alchemical edition do vary, and that's part of what made me, I think, attracted to both. So here, I'll give a bit of a, a look-see at the alchemical and the, the alchemical edition sizes. So another one of those bags. Now the alchemical edition comes in two different sizes. So this is great for those who prefer larger decks. You can get the alchemical edition in the larger size. And the, as far as cardstock goes, for those who are very concerned with it, the original edition, the standard edition that is published through US Games does seem to have very just standard US Games cardstock, which tends to be, from, in my opinion, a thicker cardstock as far as mass market decks go. And US Games, in my opinion, is one of the, the better mass market cardstocks for those who are interested in it. But it is, it is more of like a standard cardstock, but a little bit on the thicker side. I'm not great with GSM and such, but I do believe it would probably be about 350 or so. And it's held up very well. It feels very sturdy. It's a semi-gloss. Um, which I tend to like, so it's not too reflective, but it's also not too matte, and they don't stick together at all. And these are the backs. I think I showed those already. So we have the, the Alchemical Edition, which both have the same style of backs. I believe you can get still the, the standard size on uh, Anna Cortez's website. I didn't see the larger Alchemical Edition posted, but I got mine off of this website called Meow Wolf. And it's a website for artists, and I do believe they have a lot of Anna Cortez's work, so I'll link that down below just in case something isn't on Anna Cortez's website. Last I checked, they did have in stock um, more of the large size alchemical editions. So something to note is that the card stock is actually different here. The smaller alchemical edition has more of a linen finish, that almost like bicycle playing card stock. If you can see the texture of the linen, I actually really enjoy it. It slides really nicely. I would say that the thickness is about the same, but it is, of course, yes, that more linen style. And it's more of a, it is sort of a semi-gloss, even though it is, uh, it is linen. And personally, I originally went for the Alchemical Edition, just being more attracted to the artwork. I believe I originally saw this deck on Natalia at Ouroboros' YouTube channel when she mentioned it briefly. In Oracle decks, she was, she was really loving, I think it was. So 
Um, but it's okay. So something that's important to note is that all of the names, for example, with the court cards are going to be the same. The same concepts exist. Although the, the biggest thing is just that the alchemical editions have two jokers, whereas the standard, the original edition does not. Anna Cortez doesn't really seem to like or use jokers in her system very often. So it's not something that she, she cared to include or go off on too, too much. And as I learned from reading, jokers are a very recent addition in, in playing card history and don't have much grounding in terms of divination, more so were incorporated for gaming purposes, as far as I could find. But here, for this is a good... Um, so each will have an equivalent. The system is the same, and all of the cards will be basically the exact same in the alchemical and the standard, just the artistic rendering is going to be different. But the, the meaning, the system is the same, and the characters, the figures, and the artwork are going to be more or less the same, just done in a different style. So we have um, Marduk the Heartless for the King of Spades. Over here we also have Marduk the Heartless for the King of Spades in the Alchemical Edition. So just as we would also say have the West Wind for the Four of Hearts, if we were to go and find the Four of Hearts over in the Alchemical Edition, we would also, again, have the same card, the same West Wind, just done differently. So different art style. But yes, this is the Alchemical Edition, the smaller size, or the more standard poker size. This is one of the Jokers, Pompero, the Joker of Spades. And then we would also find, let me find the other, oh wait, no, not that's not one of the Jokers, I apologize. Um, Otto, the, the red Joker. So that's, this is a card that you wouldn't find in the standard edition. And if I can find the other, let's see. The artwork in the alchemical one is, I do think I favor the alchemical a bit more in terms of the artwork and the art style, but of course, that's going to be different for everyone. I do want to show both of the jokers though, if I can find them. Is that, is Pompero a joker? I forget. I'd have to go through and sort this out. But yes, this is the, the standard size of the alchemical. And then here is the larger alchemical. So it's the exact same artwork, just larger than... So for those who look, here we go. It's the exact same artwork, but just larger. Personally, I got this one first, and because this is the one that Natalia had shown, and it is nice. This is actually the same, it feels like the same kind of cardstock as the US Games published version. Um, it's not linen, it's more of just I, what feels like 350 GSM to me, I could be wrong, cardstock, uh, semi-gloss, and I think it's nice for those who really like to get into the artwork here. They almost feel like small prints, and so I really appreciate that. And there's so much depth and meaning in, uh, that goes into the system that Anna Cortez has created that she's devised with her father. And there are countless anecdotes in her book, in her books, I should say. So you will get stories and sort of parables and writings from her father that are more poetic in the books. So I do find that the literature is invaluable. And I do think that she has so much out there in terms of free resources with her blog on her website and her YouTube channel that has a free course that one would be missing out to not take advantage of those. She really has gone out of her way and created such um, a wealth of knowledge. And so I've really been loving getting into all of that. I've read a bunch of her blog posts, read these books. There's also a, um, a sort of document that has stories that tie in with the playing card um, illustrations that her father's written. And you can purchase either the PDF or a copy that's been printed and bound. And I do have that. I haven't read them all, but it is more of this meandering. It feels like, it's almost like a trip, honestly. I wouldn't say that it's the easiest thing to read. It, the stories do tend to have a darker element to them. With a lot of these cards, there is sort of a darker flip side to them. This isn't the kind of deck that's going to give you happy, aff affirmative type readings. It is very balanced, and there is always going to be this sort of... Um, each sword almost feels like a sword with a dual edge. Each one's going to have, oh, and of course this, this comes up, all of the sevens are actually considered swords and they're kind of thought of in the way that I kind of perceived it as tools. So 
The Seven of Diamonds would be the Sword of Truth. Something important to note also is the way that the correspondences work for Anna. So Anna attributes the diamonds to fire, which for me works really well. The hearts are going to be uh, cups or a water equivalent. The spades are going to be earth, and the earth is the one where we see, I would say, the more challenging sort of suit, the one that has a lot of darker elements just intrinsically. And for me, that kind of reminds me of the swords in the tarot. We tend to get harder and harsher lessons and messages in the sword suit. In Anna Cortez's specific system, it's the spades, and the spades are attributed to earth. Now, I do know that for many playing card uh, divination systems that the spades do tend to be attributed to either air or earth, depending, and that regardless, spades do tend to be the suit that has the more challenging lessons and messages present. So that's just something that's come up. And then the clubs are where we would see air. Let me find a club. I do love the courts. I love how each character has a name and a personality, and Anna goes into their story and they sort of create a family unit um, within each of the suits and they sort of also have this history and, a, and a, just a very vibrant personality and I think the idea of naming them is something that adds a lot of depth and nuance and layer, um, something that I hadn't seen in any other playing card deck. Some of these characters are from mythologies, well obviously I think many will know Dracula and just his mythos. Um, and then for those who are into more, I would say, um, what would this be considered? Pagan, that sort of, you know, um, Merlin-esque. I, I, I hope you know what I'm getting at, but yes, um, Galad is here. Some of these names, I believe, are more of Anna's creation, and some are derived from various mythos, and I like how those can kind of be drawn in. If you look into the book, for example, there is sometimes myths and stories from various cultures that can be attributed to these cards and then the the myth will actually tie in and it's not as easy to see just looking at a card but if you were to take the time to read the literature and really get into Anna's um, sort of headspace there is there are a lot of stories attributed to these cards which I find to be very enriching for the system um, when I can take a story or a parable or a myth and tie it to a card I can suddenly then incorporate that into, I would say, readings and divination, and that just adds so much. I will say, well, maybe I should have prefaced with the fact that there's nudity in this deck, and some of the images are harder to look at, this being one of them. This is one of the cards, though, that is changed a little bit more significantly from the standard, so that's the Eight of Spades. Let's see if we can find the Eight of Spades here. I do know it has the same sort of meaning, but that the actual... Is this what it is? Three? Yes. So we have, these are both the Eight of Spades, but in the Standard Edition, you get the Field of Stone, and in the Alchemical Edition, you get the Curse. So there are a few where the artwork deviates to a more significant degree, and I think that that adds to wanting to have both decks and understand that, they're, that the meaning can kind of shift even within the same system. So... Um, I believe that that's all I can kind of come up with to say. I would highly recommend these decks and all of Anna Cortez's work. I, for one, am really looking forward to her upcoming book and also getting the chance to speak with her and, and learn more and ask questions. So if you do have any gripping questions and things that you want to know, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to hopefully, when I get the chance to interview Anna, bring those up at some point. Now, I guess we could finish up by laying down a few cards and seeing how they work together. Part of what I like with Anna's literature is that she goes into different spreads and reading styles and techniques. So there are a few in here that I find really unique, like a geomantic lay, uh, layout. She has a chapter in here on geomancy, which I found to be a great correspondence for playing cards and using it to better understand, I would say, the numerology um, within any given system. So maybe we'll do, here we can do this, we'll do the bridge layout. And the bridge is actually based on, I believe it's the six, the six of hearts. All of the sixes are kind of like places or locations to some degree. So there's a tower, there's a bridge. And if I am not mistaken, the six of hearts is what the bridge is. Let's see if we can find it. Or if I passed it. Here it is. No, it's the six of clubs. 
I apologize, but yes, this is the bridge, the six of clubs or six of air. It has to go, it has to do with movement of leaving things in the past or moving towards something, um, transitionary phases. And this to me actually reminds me a lot of the Rider Waite Smith Six of Swords. So that one was an easy one for me to latch on to, but might be nice to do a little layout and just look at it. So this is the bridge layout. This is what it looks like. And so we'll lay down a few cards. So we'll put the bridge, I believe, put the bridge in the middle and we can use the alchemical. So we'll just lay these out. So we have a lot of court cards actually here. Um, very interesting. Well, court cards in terms of Anna system because we have a 10 of diamonds, which would be considered a princess and uh, a court card that is a, a sort of counterpart to a jack. Let's see, I wanna make sure this is actually in frame. I've created a little bit of a mess around here actually. But in the past, for example, we would look to Gawain um, the Nine of Diamonds and what that might represent, um, things that we're striving for, hopes and ambitions, or um, something that we maybe let go of. I'm still relatively new to playing cards, but I do feel like I have a bit of a grasp and can do readings in a way. So yeah, that's our past gifts of the present. So now we have the Ten of Diamonds. It feels like we've kind of elevated a bit and come into our own. We're starting to understand things a bit better and and really just emerge and I would say enmesh oneself within what what feels like more of a career-oriented path. We have a lot of diamonds. I like the way that Anna Cortez in her book speaks to the suits and looking for um, is there um, a wealth of one suit and a dearth of another, those sorts of things, and then looking to the future, the rivals. So we have a bit of what would seem like a more challenging or just something, a hurdle we're going to have to overcome. Maybe that's how we move forward. Maybe that's what the bridge represents, is this sort of dichotomy in terms of the self um, and the career, and then obstacles of the present. And we now see the queen of spades, Leia or Leia. And so this might represent an individual, somebody that sort of stands in our path. If we look to the ideas of a family dynamic, we might have somebody that is a superior that doesn't necessarily share our values, kind of contending with us in terms of superiority and knowledge, um, who stands to potentially either um, make or break where we're at. So I really love Anna Cortez's spreads. I love her cards. I love the way she speaks to them. And these decks, in my opinion, are absolutely stunning. And of the few playing card decks that I have and use for divination, these are my favorites. So I hope that this review was helpful. If anybody out there was looking to know more about these decks or hadn't heard of them and is now interested, um, all the better. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd be curious. And if you've used these, let me know how you find them to be and if there's anything that you thought I missed that you want to include for others who are curious so that way we can have a dialogue. I hope you are all well. Like and subscribe if this was fun and interesting. And until next time, bye.